Okay, guys, so we're getting into season five. Tywin is dead at the hand of his own son in a bathroom, which is insane. So this show couldn't get any crazier, man. Like, comment, subscribe, buckle up. We are starting season five. That was crazy. This is gonna go crazy. Mm. Yeah, Tyrion's a man now, ain't he? Season five, hey, greatest show you, of all time. Huh? You know something I, I genuinely never really thought about? What? His character art could be so different now. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, obviously that's so like obvious. Like what's he gonna do, be on the like run? <laughs> yeah, but I never like took the time to think like, you know, like he could become kind of like Tywin in a way, like a boss, you know? Tyrion? Maybe. I think he's gonna be on the run. Yeah, you're probably right about that. <laughs> He's gonna go settle somewhere. It's gonna be the Avengers of him and Varys. <laughs> Did you see that X? <sighs> no, I can't believe it. Yeah, the Boltons until Winterfell. The wall almost got got, didn't it? It almost did. Yeah, so they dropped the anchor of the Titanic. <laughs> Smacked all those people off. Yeah, that was very clutch. <laughs> I'm kind of getting to the point where the urge to like hum this and sing this is Yeah, getting... I know. And and I just don't want to because it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, if it wasn't for the camera, I'd be at very easy right now. <laughs> channeling, channeling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll be thinking. He's like, get out of my swamp. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Who? <laughs> Who is this? My Stella. Why not? If your father, he'll, he'll never know we're gone. But if he finds out. Oh, she's in Dorne, ain't she? You don't need to be afraid. Hey, let's go. We see Dorne. Oh, she's got like the little the Cersei hair. That's kind of cute. Mm hmm. I don't know why they're venturing out there in their little dresses. I was like that place where that dude was sticking it to all his daughters. Grasser's keep. We shouldn't go in. Of course we should. That's straight trespassing. <laughs> yeah, you get shot with a with a crossbow where I'm from. <laughs> if there's like a lit fire, don't go in there. <laughs> get out! Let's go. No. Listen to your friend. They said that you were terrifying with cat's teeth and three eyes. You're not terrifying. You're boring. <laughs> you don't know what I am. I know you're a witch. And you can see the future. A witch? Mine. Everyone wants to know their future until they know their future. This is my father's land. Tell me my future or I'll have your two boring eyes gouged out of your head. <laughs> Who is this little girl? I know. I don't think that's my cell anymore. <laughs> Give me a taste. She kind of looks like <gasps> that dude Cersei was sleeping with. The cousin or whatever. Lancel. Yeah. <laughs> she kind of looks like Lancel. Ugh. Three questions you get. You are like the answers. Oh, no. I've been promised to the prince. When will we marry? You're with the king. But I will be queen. Oh, yes. You'll be queen for a time. Then comes another, younger, more beautiful, to cast you down and take all you hold dear. Will the king and I have children? No, the king will have 20 children, and you will have three. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Gold will be their crowns. Gold, their shrouds. We have to go, Sassy! Baby Cersei. Oh, that was Cersei as a little girl. And that lady the younger was kind of right. The younger queen is uh, what's your name? What's your name, baby? What the start? No, the younger, the younger queen girl who wants to be queen really bad. I'm so bad with names. What's your name? I should know. Sansa? Nah, baby, the one who's marrying. Oh, uh, 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 Marjorie. Marjorie, yeah, that's right. My bad. We were not Let's on the go. same page there. All good. It's my fault. Oh, she about to get married. <laughs> Tywin's funeral. Your Grace, we are honored by your presence. The mourners are waiting. We want a moment alone with him. But your grace, many of these lords and ladies have traveled day and night to be here from all seven kingdoms. They will wait. Oh, I'm very interested to know what Jamie thinks about it. Me too. Because he is low-key his fault, kind of, right? Mm -hmm. You really can't have people find out. Right. He never wanted you to be a king's guard. The music. Protecting his dead body. Built it for us. He meant it for us. Going to try to take it away. All of it. They. All of them out there. They have nothing to do with it. The man who murdered our father, he tore us apart. He's the enemy. I've been telling you for years, you've been defending him for this years. This is exactly what they want. And now our father oh, is dead. Man. That little monster is out there <laughs> somewhere drawing breath. Did you set him free? Is he going to tell the truth? Tyrion may be a monster, but at least he killed our father on purpose. You killed him by mistake, the stupidity. Write that in your book. You're a man of action, aren't you? When it occurs to you to do something, you do it. Never mind the consequences. Impulsive. Look at the consequences. Here they are. He loved you more than anyone in this world. Hard to believe, man. What is it, Tyrion in there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Looking raggedy. Looking like a broom. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> I still don't see why I had to stay at this fucking crate 
once we set the <laughs> I save your life. If they catch you, they catch me. How long has he been in that thing? I cannot say I feel over guilty about leaving you in that fucking crate. Do you know what it's like thing is to stuff thing? your shit through one of those air holes? I only know what it's like to pick up your shit and throw it overboard. <laughs> and this? The home of my colleague. Illyrio Mapatis, a merchant. Don't we know him? He and I met many years ago through mutual friends. A group of people who saw Robert Baratheon disaster he was. We tried to do what was best for the realm by supporting a Targaryen restoration. And thus began the chain of mistakes that has led us both here. <laughs> Things have gotten worse. Westeros needs to be saved from itself. Are you lord if you kill your father? I don't imagine they revoke your nobility for killing a whore. You already drank yourself across the narrow sea. In a box. Why stop now? Because we are talking about the future of our country. The future is shit, just like the past. Dang. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> a little seasick. That's all good. Get it out, dude. Oh, no. Taking the statue there. Is this Daenerys music right here? Absolutely. <laughs> all you see is those chips. <laughs> that thing landed pretty good though. I know. Oh, that thing would have been bouncing all over the place. Broke something. He just wants to be cuddled. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. Very sweet. That's so sad that he's like pay someone for that. <gasps> what the heck? <clears throat> Who's that? I don't know, but that was giving me some weird vibes though. That's why I wasn't too like. They've never killed before. Conquerors always meet with resistance. I didn't conquer them, their own people did. He did not risk his life fighting for his freedom so cowards in masks could take it away. And I did not take up residence in this pyramid so I could watch the city below decline into chaos. What was the name of the man you lost? White Rat, your grace. I want him buried with honor, publicly, in the Temple of the Graces. The sons of the Harpy will hear that message. Make them very angry. Angry snakes lash out. Makes chopping off their heads that much easier. Find the men who did this and bring them to me. Yeah, who did that? A gold mask dude that looked like some Assassin's Creed stuff. I know I always have to say it. Sorry. Origins, I believe. I wanted to speak with you. <laughs> <laughs> they got the picture. Why do you come? White rats. The unsullied who. I have heard they found his body in a brothel. I have heard that more than one unsullied has been known to visit Marine's brothels. Why would an unsullied go to a brothel? I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I ain't been in one. <laughs> Is she worried because she don't want him going to one? No, I think she's genuinely <coughs> curious. Oh, because they don't have parts? Right, oh, yeah. okay. Get your shield off. Too heavy. If it wasn't heavy, it wouldn't stop a sword. Now, get it off. <laughs> <laughs> Try it again. Drive at me. Keep your shield up or I'll ring your head like a bell. Shouldn't you be trained? John's to taking on that big brother role, kind of like two bees into him. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. How many brothers can say that they've killed a White Walker and a Fen? I might be the first in history. Look at the way he's standing. <laughs> these men need a firm up. They're poachers and thieves, not soldiers. He didn't die. Yeah, he made it, didn't he? I kind of like him after the last episode. That one hates me. He hates the wildlings. All the wildlings. Don't let them send us away. So Dennis Malister has commanded the Shadow Tower for 20 years, and people say he's a good man. Damn, don't let them send us away. I told you, wherever you go, I go too. Can't leave, they'll execute you. Yeah, especially since he's back. The king wants a word. Oh yeah, I forgot they're there too. But I, I thought they would have left by now. Chill, bro. I know, don't get any ideas. She's staring my man up over here. You're cold, my lady. The fire burns inside. The Lord's fire lives <laughs> in the <middle> of snow. <laughs> Good thing she has black hair this season. Are you a virgin? Because John likes redheads. Why would she just ask that of all the questions? Bastard of Winterfell. Back to his nilling ways, huh? Yeah. You know who rules at Winterfell now? Who's Bolton? Traitor who plunged a dagger in Rob Stark's heart. Don't you want to avenge him? Born brother of the Night's Watch now. I've been talking to your sworn brothers. Many of them love you. They're good men. We've seen taking the body of a wildling girl north of the wall. Why? Where she belonged. Some of the Night's Watch feel you have too much affection for the wildlings. They were born on the wrong side of the wall. Doesn't make them monsters. I shall take back the north from the thieves who stole it. I shall mount Bruce Bolton's head on a spike. 
But if I'm to take Winterfell, I need more men. <laughs> Talking about the wildlings. Oh. oh. Kind of smart there, boy. That's wild, dude. Because that's, that's a, a big turner. army. That's a big turn in the story arc. You want the wildlings to march in your army? I swear to follow me, I'll pardon them. Take Winterfell once the North is won, I'll declare them citizens of the realm. It's a fair offer. More than fair. They will I'll offer them their lives and their freedom. If Mance kneels before me and swears no, his loyalty. not gonna happen, bro. You admire him, don't you? I respect him. He likes you. Convince him to bend the knee. Crazy. Three birds. How much time do I have? Nightfall. Sun drops fast <laughs> this time of year. It sure does. Hurry, Snow. Look at Sansa with don't the dark hair. <laughs> Great warrior who swings a sword like a girl with palsy. <laughs> Some boys develop more slowly. He's still young. He's 13. <laughs> gifts, does he? The gift of a great name. Looks like a pepperoni pizza that flies. Sometimes. Oh, it does. That's all one needs. <laughs> <laughs> Is Sansa still gonna marry him? I have done nothing more than my duty, my lady. I have no doubt that on my return, Robin's skills will have improved immeasurably. He'll be safe here. Well, we had north at some point. He said Sansa had a brother at Castle Black. You're hundreds of miles from King's Landing. No one knows what you look like. You're safe. But I'm your squire. Do you even know what a squire is? An attendant to a knight? I'm not a knight. That means you're not a squire. Well, where would I go? Dang. Who swore to find the Stark girls? Found Arya. She didn't want my protection. Sansa's still not. You shut your mouth. I'm not a leader. All I ever wanted was to fight for a lord I believed in. The good lords are dead and the rest are monsters. Maybe she'll find Daenerys. You told Lord Royce we were going to the Fingers. Sansa. But we're heading west. If you wanted to betray us, you already would have. So where are we going? To a land where you trust everyone. To a land so far from here, even Cersei Lannister can't get her hands on you. Your father was a, mm -hmm. a force. <laughs> reckoned with. A force. She's like, just shut up, bro. Sick of you. Isn't that her future hubby? <clears throat> to have known him as such. Not anymore. But just being in his oh, presence yeah. was enough to make it so clear. What a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, deepest condolences, Your Grace. I never trusted Varys. I often warn. Cousin Lancel, I hardly recognized you. Oh, I God. What happened to him? I apologize for my son's appearance. The Cersei's, Cersei's cousin in a robe. They call them half naked. sparrows, bloody fanatics. Religion has its place, of course, but at a certain point. They never would have come to the capital when Tywin was alive. So he's like an occult thing? Yeah, that's kind of the vibe, right? Your wounds from the Blackwater seem to have healed. It wasn't my wounds that needed healing. What can I do for you? You can forgive me. What could you possibly have done to warrant my forgiveness? I led you into the darkness. I doubt you've ever led anyone anywhere. I tempted you into our unnatural relations. And of course, there was the king, his boar hunt, his wine. Mm. I don't know what you're talking about. I found peace in the light of the seven. You can too. They watch over all of us, ready to dole out mercy or justice. Was that a threat? Right. Their world is at hand. I will pray for your father's soul. It looks like... You think I want that woman married to my brother? She doesn't marry me. She doesn't go to Highgarden, which means she stays in King's Landing, which means you're trapped here with Cersei Lannister as your mother by law. That sucks. That's true. <laughs> Perhaps. What's that mean? I mean, she's got plans. Her brain's thinking. Eunuch, the spider, master of whispers. Imp, half man. <laughs> Is he drunk? <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> there are faster ways to kill yourself. Not for a coward. Their outfits. <laughs> you never told me why you set me free. Your brother asked me to. Could have said no. You risked your life, your position, everything. Why? You're not family. You owe me nothing. I did it for the Seven Kingdoms. I don't believe in saviors. I believe men of talent have a part to play in the war to come. Going to have to find another soldier. Done with Westeros, and Westeros is done with me. <laughs> Any fool with a bit of luck can find himself born into power, but earning it for yourself that takes work not well suited for work you have your father's instincts for politics and you have compassion what is it you want exactly peace prosperity a land where the powerful do not prey on the powerless where the castles are made of gingerbread <laughs> and the moats are filled with blackberry wine and perhaps we've grown so used to horror we assume there's no other way if you sat on the iron throne would you spread misery throughout the land i will never sit on the iron throne no you won't I have my hopes up. <laughs> the Seven Kingdoms need someone stronger than Tommen, but gentler than Stannis. Good luck finding him. Who said anything about him? Daenerys? That's what I was thinking. You can stay here at Illyrio's palace. And the music was in the background. Death, or you can ride with me to Marine, meet Bruh. Daenerys Targaryen, and decide if the world is worth fighting for. Yes. Can I drink myself <laughs> to death on the road to Marine? Sure, let's go. That's kind of nutty, dude. So I this know. story's really taking a turn. Tyrion's about to go meet up with Daenerys, and finally that's how they're finally that. gonna link up. Yes, I didn't know. Oh, I would have never guessed it would have been that way, though. We're in the fifth season. It's about time. 
This is getting good. The wise masters of Yunkai have agreed to cede power to a council of elders made up of both the freedmen and the former slaveholders. All matters of consequence will be brought to you for review. They did ask for some concessions. Concessions. Whoa, look at her outfit. Politics is the art of compromise. I'm not a politician. I'm a queen. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. It's easier to rule happy subjects than angry ones. I don't expect the wise masters to be happy. Slavery made them rich. I ended slavery. They do not ask for the return of slavery. They ask for the reopening of the fighting pits. The fighting pits? Where slaves fought slaves to the death. Free men would fight free men. No fighting pits. Opening them, if you could... How many times must I say no before you understand? That's what they used to say about the UFC. Whatever he wants from me, he's not going to get it. You should reopen the fighting pits. I was a bad child. I wasn't big, but I was quick. And I loved to fight. I had my first match when I was 16. You were sold into slavery, forced to fight to the death for the amusement of the masters, and you're defending the fighting pits. <laughs> I'm only here because of those pits. I learned to fight like a Dothraki. Oh, they trained him. How did she not know this? Money for my he was like the gladiator. He set me free when he died. I joined the Second Sons, and then I met you. You're the queen. Everyone's too afraid of you to speak truth. Everyone but me. Show your strength here, now. That's why I have the Unsullied patrolling the streets. You're not the mother of Unsullied. You're the mother of dragons. I don't want another child's bones dropped at my feet. No one's seen Drogon in weeks. For all I know, he's found halfway across the world. That's scary. Really? I can't control them anymore. Dragon queen with no dragons? It's not a queen. Speaking truth. What's he saying? Embrace your dragons? You're not like a woman who like has armies that are like but armies? I think he's saying like if you're gonna own dragons and be the queen of dragons, then you can't do it with your conscience. Like you just gotta go for it. That's the vibe I got. Own it. Yeah, kind of. Like, you just, you can't have dragons in a conscience. Like, you got to pick one. They're probably going to be pissed at you. Yeah, you might want to watch out. Where are y'all? Viserion? Rhaegal? Dang, she's scared of her dragons, ain't she? Mm-hmm. I don't blame her. <laughs> Shoot, man. I was not expecting that. Easy. Easy. Ooh. You better smack him in the head. Teach them dragons a lesson. She ran. Oh, my gosh. You can't do that. This isn't about to go well. He might be offended. John even asked him. I know. He, like, betrayed him and everything. Yeah. So here we are. When we first met, you were my prisoner for our last meeting. This doesn't have to be our last meeting. No, but it will be. You know what Stannis wants? He wants me to bend the knee. Oh, he already knows. He wants the free folk to fight for him. I'll give him this much. He's bold. Shouldn't a king be bold? Oh, I. I respect him, but I'll never serve him. So proud. You told me you weren't here to conquer. You told me your people had bled enough. That's right. I don't want them bleeding for Stannis Baratheon either. You spent your life convincing 90 clans to come together for the first time in history. Thens and Hornfoots, the Ice River clans, even the giants. A life's work uniting them. You didn't do it for power. You didn't do it for glory. You brought them together to save them because none of them have survived the winter, not if they're north of the wall. Isn't their survival more important than your pride? Pride. I just said the same thing. <laughs> this isn't about that. Then bend the knee and save your people. People. They followed me because they respected me, because they believed in me. The moment I kneel for a southern king, that's all gone. And how many tens of thousands are out there right now? How many women? How many children? And you won't go out and rescue them because why? You're afraid of looking afraid. No shame in that. How will they do it? Beheading? Hanging? They'll burn you alive. Mm. Bad way to go. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to die. I'm burnt to death. I don't want people to remember me like that. Scorched and screaming. It's better than betraying everything I believe. And what happens to your people? And they'll sing songs about you. You'd rather burn than kneel. A great hero. Until winter comes. And the White Walkers come for us all. And there's no one left to sing. That's what I was thinking. You're a good lad. Truly. You are. But if you can't understand why I won't enlist my people in a foreigner's war, there's no point explaining. I get it. Geologically, he's out of bargaining chips, though. Mm hmm He's just prepared to die, I guess. The expense of his people, but he thinks it's the great good to not kneel, I guess. I think you're making a terrible mistake. Well, he just doesn't want them to go under Westeros' war, Westeros' rule and wanted. stuff. Yeah. Is this about to be the end of Mance? He should at least be given an opportunity to like consult with his people. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a big decision they have to make. Dang. Lance Raider, you've been called the king beyond the war. Westeros only has one king. Bend the knee, I promise you mercy. What do you want him to do? I don't know. I kind of don't want him to. I want him to kneel and save his people. Mm -mm. I kind of don't want him to. Kneel and live. Do it, brother. He can't. He joined all these people for what? You know, for him to bend the knee. This was my home for many years. I wish you good fortune in the wars to come. Oh. Oh, man. Wars to come. Oh, my. I don't disagree with Stannis. There can only be one king. But this is too much, man. Burning someone alive like that. He's got to prove his point, I guess. We all must choose. Lord or peasant, our choices are the same. We choose light or we choose darkness. We choose good 
or we choose evil. We choose the true God or the false. Free folk, there is only one true king, and his name is Stannis. Here stands your king of lies. Behold the fate of those who choose the darkness. Do you not think she realizes how crazy she sounds? I mean, she's seen him in the fire. Maybe he's believable to her. I ain't seen yeah, him but yet. From other people's perspective, she sounds like a lunatic. Dang. He was a real one, man. I kind of liked Vance. I kind of did too. I really wanted him to nail. That sucks. I kind of didn't want him to. I kind of wanted him to do what he felt was right, yeah, which is what he did. He's getting burned here for what? Though? See the old generation gone. Now the free folk have to have new, new um, rulers. I'm with you, John. I would have been out before. That little boy didn't like that because he walked off. Look at her smile. I know. <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? That could be a lot of that trouble. That ain't good, guys. He just messed up the whole ceremony, bro. But he did it because he didn't want him to suffer. Yeah, he did it because he loves wildlings. Or wildlings, bro. I can't even say that word. Well, he respected Mance, as he should have, because Mance was not a bad guy. He's the great uniter. All right, guys. So that was Game of Thrones Season 5, Episode 1, The Words to Come. Babe, what do you think about that episode? I thought that episode was kind of the aftermath of Tywin dying. Um, You would think there would be, like, a lot of grief, a lot of, like, being sad, but there really wasn't. There was a lot of, like, movement going on. Right. Right. Um, Things just kept moving. Yeah. Didn't they? Yeah. We didn't see much with Tommen, who was the new king now. So that nothing happened really there. But we did see at the beginning that Cersei, what was it? She found a witch hut. Yeah, just a random witch hut in the woods and went in and had a very weird conversation. Right. Which which seemed like kind of accurate. I don't know if that was a dream or like if that really happened. Right after that, we found out that Varys and Tyrion are in Pentos and Varys is kind of pitching to Tyrion that we need to go meet up with Daenerys. Right, which so is a great bridge. So it's all coming full yeah. circle, kind of. I thought it was interesting when Cersei was going into that witch hut. The way she was talking to a witch, like someone of legend that had three eyes and fangs for teeth and all this crazy stuff. And she just was fearless. She was not scared at right, all. Right, and she was fearless. It just goes to show how much she uses her power as like a shield, basically. Which right. is, you know, no one likes that. But she obviously does that a lot, and it really showed in that. Even uh, as a child, yeah. Absolutely. The politics kept moving in this one. Um, something weird happened. Some, like, religious group showed up, had a weird conversation with Cersei. Called a sparrow. And they were saying that them, these dudes wouldn't show up if Tywin wasn't dead. I guess he kept them at bay. Mm -hmm. But now one popped up and had a very awkward conversation with Cersei. It seems like she has climbed every branch of the family tree, if you but know what I'm saying. But he insinuated, basically, that they planned to kill Robert Baratheon together. Right, and then he ran off and got and so basically he and all. he's gonna maybe tell the truth to someone that matters. I don't know. I don't know, man. But things are in full effect, full swing. Uh, what a, what else happened in this? Um, basically the biggest part to me was John. Um, John was John was kind of like the messenger in between that message that Stannis gave to Mance Raider, like either bend the knee and give up your army, fight with me, or fight with me, pretty much like in the war right yeah to, uh king's landing fight with me and you can live but if you don't bend the knee we're gonna burn you alive which is a brilliant strategy from stannis uh which is why he's one of my favorite characters but <laughs> um great strategy man because there's some very some very tough warriors up there north of the wall man just battle tested the conditions just have them very hardened and just ready to fight i thought it was a brilliant strategy it really hurt my feelings that mesh raider just wouldn't bend his knee which ultimately you know, it kind of it kind of brings us back to Ned Stark in the beginning. You're just you know? honorable when you're honorable, honorable you yeah. just go out. I mean, but ultimately Ned turned on his own honor to try to like save his own family in a sense, and it ended up costing him in his head. So it's really hard to say what's the right thing to do. Right. Uh, and then I don't in know, the man. end, I when they really were don't. burning Mance, John spares Mance because John respected Mance. So it's kind of like defying Stannis, but Openly. respecting Mance. Well, they said they made the comment in the episode that a lot of people is getting the sentiment that John has way too much affection right. for the wildlings. And it's one of those things like, dude, where do your loyalties lie? Right. Like, how do we trust you if you're empathizing with the enemy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's kind of hard. So I get where they're coming from, too. The show's kind of giving me the vibe that, like, eventually he's going to have to answer for that. Right. Um, but also, like, he also gave us a vibe that he was kind of a crow through and through. But now he's kind of like just not. He's kind of defying a lot. He's kind of like a flipper flopper. Yeah, he's kind of like, I'm not really sure. Well, where his loyalties lie right I think now. it ties into the whole bastard narrative. Um, he just has like an identity crisis. I don't think he right. has like a set. You know, if you're born, like if you're a highborn man, you know, my father was the Lord of Winterfell. I mean, that's something you wear as an identity your whole mm -hmm. life. And John, in a sense, has it. But in a sense, he's yeah. like a free agent, man, in a way. Yeah. So 
really good episode uh, one of my favorite episodes so far is really setting up the political landscape i thought it was really interesting that that witch lady told cersei all the information that she gave her mm-hmm. and that was just kind of crazy to me and then it cuts to marjorie and that was just kind of cold so right. we're gonna see where it goes guys yeah all right next one what do we got the old times whenever bravo stood in danger the titan would step with fire in his eyes he's just a statue <laughs> Don't be afraid. He's announcing our arrival. It's a big world, ain't it, Arya? I'm afraid. Dude, she's been everywhere. <laughs> bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. I'm sorry. What is wrong with me? Oh, wow. What a sight. That place is crazy. It looks like Greece. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Just cooking up some fish. This is a cute little spot. The house of black and white, where you'll find the man you seek. Man, yep. he doesn't have to pay like a parking fee or nothing. Be nice. I would not go in there. Thank you for bringing me. Any man of Bravos would have done the same. Ralamogulis. Ralatahiris. Like, who's going to answer that, you know? Yeah, because she doesn't have a ride back. Hello, Ralamogulis. Jack and Hagar gave me this. No one here by that name. Across the narrow sea. I have nowhere else to go. You have everywhere else to go. <laughs> but wait! What? She's homeless. She better learn to swim. Yeah, that thing's like an island, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Cersei, This reminds me of uh, Doctor Strange. Outside of that Cersei. temple. Yeah. yeah. Cersei, Voldefrey. Oh, man. How many days did she do that? They're really not letting her in, are they? <laughs> I thought they would have went out there and been like, would you shut your mouth, girl? That's the only thing that gets you anything there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Must be good food if it's crowded. Look at all the cars in the parking lot. <laughs> it's crowded. <laughs> <laughs> what in the heck it would suck to be her to work there <laughs> oh my good god Ale? <gasps> no way his food. <laughs> it's a little... to gave you a raven scroll you are becoming an observant young lady my mother used to say dark wings dark words dark an phoenix say, <laughs> my marriage proposal has been accepted thought you still mourned the death of my beloved aunt lisa oh he recognized him my lady sounds a stark don't look. She's dyed her hair, but it's her. She's sitting with Peter Baelish. Little finger. A bunch of nights with him. Ten, I think. Too many. My lady, I don't think this is the She's right. so impulsive. Horses. Calm down. We only mm-hmm. have one horse. Find more. Ready the horses. We only have one horse. <laughs> Lord Baelish, Lady Sansa, my name is Brienne of Tarth. We've met with Renly Baratheon. What did he say about you? He said, your loyalty came free of charge. <laughs> lady Sansa. <laughs> Before your mother's death, I was her sworn sword. I gave my word I would find you and protect you. I will shield your back and keep your counsel and give my life for yours if need be. I swear it by the old gods and the new. She's just out for lunch. I know. Yes. Lady Brienne, you were Catelyn Stark's sworn sword. Strange. It was after Renly's murder. Ah, yes. You were accused of killing him. I tried to save him. You were accused. By men who didn't see what happened. And what did happen? Ooh. Yeah, go ahead. You're gonna look crazy. He was murdered by a shadow. Oh. A shadow with the face of Stannis Baratheon. <laughs> a shadow. With the face. This woman swore to protect Renly. She failed. She swore to protect your mother. She failed. Why would I want somebody with your history of failure guarding Lady Sansa? Why should you have any say in her affairs? Because I am her uncle. We're family now, and you are an outsider. Give me Lady Brienne, but experience has made me wary of outsiders. Lady Sansa, if we can have a word alone. No. Please, my lady, if I could explain. I saw you at Joffrey's wedding, bowing to the king. Neither of us wanted to be there. Sometimes we don't have a choice. And sometimes we do. Oh, shoot. You should leave. Or ran. Why don't you stay? Man, ask you to stay. So why don't you stay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I feel bad for her, though. Because when they put it like that, it does seem like she's not a very good protector. But she's just with bad circumstances. Yeah, no one's going to believe that whole shadow nonsense. And she wasn't even there when Cat got killed. She was with Jamie. Almost getting killed herself. No. Oh, nice. She flanked him. Oh, please save him. Please don't shoot him. Who's gonna shoot him? I just thought I was about to see an arrow just go through his chest. Like they found him or something. Who's that? I guess that means you're unarmed. <laughs> no, Podrick, no! Oh. Podrick? Yes, my lady. You can stand now. <laughs> Sansa Stark, 
wary of strangers as you should be. I saw her riding on the east road with Littlefinger. We'll follow them. My lady, both Stark girls refused your service. Maybe you're released from your vow. They don't want your protection. Do you think she's safe with Littlefinger? No, my lady. <laughs> Get your horse. But at some point, isn't she just the lady who's trying to kidnap them? Well, yeah, but maybe she's just trying to do her best. A red viper. There are only two like it in the world. The one I'm wearing, the one I gave to Marcella. Of course it's a threat. Our daughter's alone in Dawn, surrounded by people who hate our family. It's a threat. No note. They blame us for the death of Oberyn and his sister. That's so loud. Our daughter's in danger and you're worried I'm speaking too loudly. The world can't know she's our daughter. Then don't call her your daughter. You've never been a father to her. If I was a father to She's taking a lot of cheap shots. In the I know. Streets. What has your caution brought? Our eldest child murdered at his own wedding. Our only daughter shipped off to dawn. Our baby boy is set to marry that smirking whore from Highgarden. <laughs> <laughs> I love when she gets mad about Marjorie. <laughs> it's so satisfying, but it's so mean. <laughs> I'm going to make things better. You've never made anything better. I'm going to dawn. I'm bringing our daughter home. Whoa. You can't just ask Prince Duran to give her back. She's promised to his son. I'm not going to ask him anything. You go down there with an army, it's an act of war. No army. Do you know where they're keeping her? Oberyn mentioned the war's gardens. I'll find her. Is there anything else, Your Grace? You're going to dawn. A one-handed man. Alone. I never said I was going alone. Who are you going with? Yeah. And what? Does Marcella, like, does she have a good relationship with Jamie? Because that wouldn't that be creepy if your uncle just showed up? I don't like yellow. Roses are very nice, definitely roses. And music, I adore music, but... Is that his wife? Soon to be. That's what they eat in the capital, don't they? Don't they? Don't who? People eat pigeon pie in the capital. They certainly do, my dear. They certainly do. <laughs> it's a fine place, isn't it? That's you, isn't it? Fine. <laughs> Throwing rocks, not paying attention Never to nobody. I'd end up settling down in a place like this. We won't get to live at Stokeworth. When mother dies, my sister gets the castle because she's older. She hates me. She calls me mean names and sometimes, even still, she pulls my hair when mother's not looking. Mm -hmm. You know what I think? I think you're a good person. And your sister is a mean person. She is. I've been all over the world. And if there's one thing I've learned, that meanness comes around. People like your sister, they always get what's coming to them, eventually. <laughs> one way or another. Ron wants to kill her for that little mention right there. <laughs> Jamie fucking Lannister. <laughs> Jamie? The Bron of the Blackwater. I was very sorry to hear about your father. This is my betrothed, Lollis. A pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> She's a loyal one, ain't she? Beautiful young bride you've chosen. When were you planning on getting married? Just get on with it. Well, with what? <laughs> what you're here for. There's no way this little visit could possibly mean anything good for me. <laughs> it's very good for you. Lollis will be marrying Sir Willis Bracken. We made a deal, your sister and I. I would have advised against that. How is this good for me? Because you're going to come with me and help me with something important. And when <laughs> we return, I'm going to give you a much better girl and a much better castle. <laughs> return from where? As far south as south goes. You'll fit in there. <laughs> That's a sick bracelet. Hilaria. And she's pissed. She wants her head cut. Oh, she's still alive. Your brother was murdered. And you sit here in the water gardens, staring at the sky and doing nothing. He was my brother long before he was anything to you. What will you do about his death? I will bury him. You would have me go to war. The whole country would have you go to war. Then we are lucky the whole country does not decide. The sand snakes are with me. They have the love of their people. Oberyn is dead. How many of your brothers and sisters do they have to kill? Let me have her. Let me send her to Cersei. One finger oh, no. at a time. She's on her Ramsay stuff. I loved my brother. But we do not mutilate little girls for vengeance. Oberyn wanna want it. Not while I rule. And how long would that be? So there's about to be a regime change in Dorne. She wants some revenge. He needs to put a stop to her. She has no claim anymore. She's an ex. No one here. We go. In a hurry? You're afraid? Unsullied. Fear nothing. Right. Someone who's forgotten fear has forgotten how to hide. Oh! oh, wow. Fear is useful that way. How do you know? Yeah, it looks like you learned a lesson. It's a mask. Sons of the Harpy, they want to put a collar back on my neck, on all of our necks. Please, Your Grace, you must kill him. It would send a message. I think you should exercise restraint, Your Grace. Why? For one thing, he may have valuable information. And the son of the Harpy has no more valuable information. They pay poor men to do it for and them. And how do you know this? Give him a trial, at least. A fair trial. Teach them a better way. I do not know the place from where old sir comes. Things maybe are different there, I hope. Mercy. Fair trial. These mean nothing to them. All they understand is blood. What's she gonna do? 
I know. It was all very different. I love when her council gets together. It's so, like, diplomatic in a way. I like the way she handles it. Grace, a word, please, I beg you. About what? About your father. About the Mad King. The Mad King. I served in his king's guard. He burned men alive with wildfire. And his efforts to stamp out dissent led to rebellion that killed every Targaryen. Except two. You and Viserys, right? I'm not mm -hmm. my father. No, your Christ. Thank the gods. But the Mad King gave his enemies the justice he thought they deserved. And each time, it made him feel powerful and right. I will not have the son of the Harpy executed without a fair trial. Good choice. Good lessons. So Barrison's a calm one. Yeah, Barrison's giving her those history lessons, trying to help There's her. There's a buck. When I agreed to come with you, did I misrepresent my intentions? It's kind of a nice, like, ride. What else is there for me to do inside this box? You don't like it? I want to take a walk. You can't. The road to Volantis. You said we were going to Marine. What's in Volantis? The road to Marine. And what do you hope to find at the end of the road to Marine? I told you, a ruler. We've already got a ruler. Everywhere has already got a ruler. <laughs> you were quite good, you know, at ruling. Managed to kill a lot of people. She wanted me to leave King's Landing. I wouldn't go, because I liked it. Power, even as a servant. They find us repulsive. I find us repulsive. No matter what we do, people like you and me are never really satisfied inside the box. Not for long. How many dwarves are there in the world? Is that they're going to kill them all? <laughs> Not him. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to deceive your queen. Shall I throw him in a cell, your grace? It won't be necessary, Simone. I don't want to dissuade the other hunters. Mistakes will be made. Thank you, Grace. Your grace. Thank you, your Thank grace. you. Thank <laughs> you. Pardon me, Your Grace. I would take it, if you don't mind. It could prove useful for my work. Oh. Very good. He's like, can I have the head, please? Over there. You'll be fine. Cersei's dabbling in some weird stuff right now. What a great counsel. You're the hand of the king. Clearly, it would not be appropriate for a woman to assume that role. I would be willing to serve provisionally. I'm You're a good man, Lord Time Elf, but I don't imagine you'll have the time. In addition to being master of ships, the king has appointed you master of coin. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Called your oh, yeah. experience and wisdom in financial matters unparalleled. In the past, on several occasions, the Grand <laughs> Maester has served as the king's hand. The king uh, is named Kyburn, the new master of wisdom. This embarrassment to the Citadel? <laughs> Your Grace, what qualifications can he possibly have for this post? The qualification of loyalty, Grand Maester. It would please the King if you would serve as his Master of War. I would like to hear it from the King himself. He should be here, learning what it means to rule. He's asked me to speak on his behalf. I did not return to the capital to serve as your puppet, to watch you stack the small council with sycophants. Don't My brother present. has left the capital to lead a sensitive diplomatic mission. What mission? That is not your concern as Master of War. <laughs> kind of seems like it is. I know. <laughs> A mission. You are the Queen Mother, nothing more. You would abandon your king in his time of need. If he wants to send for me, I will be waiting for him at Casterly Rock. Oh. Cersei might not like that. Come on. You know this one. It looks like an animal. Snake. S. Right. Very good. Aww. She just teaches know everybody. The youngest Lord mm -hmm. Commander in history, Osric Stark, was elected at the age of 10. I know S. You'll learn, I promise. <laughs> She's worried about S's. I know. Learning new things. Well, you're a wonderful teacher. <laughs> We're doing just fine. I'm sure you and Ostrich Stark have a lot to talk about. What do you call it in the South? What happened to your face? Grayscale. That's what it is. What do you Somebody commented and said, she got the grayscale. I don't know. <laughs> she done got the grayscale. But two of my sisters had it. They both died. How did they kill you? I don't remember. I was a baby. A Aww. lot of people came and tried, I think. Whatever they did, it went away. What happened to your sisters? My father made them move out of the keep into the hut outside. None of us were allowed to go near them, but we heard them. They started to sound not like themselves. Did you ever see them? Only once at the end. They were covered with it. They acted like animals. Oh my gosh. My father had to dragged them out to the woods on a rope. What did he do with them in the woods? Mother. Leave us. You need to stay away from that girl. Why? She's a wildling. Her name's Gilly. She's nice. I'm teaching her how to read. She's a wildling. Father defeated her people. He executed their king for treason. They could strike at him by striking at you. Gilly wouldn't do that. You have no idea what people will do. All your books and you still don't know. She's kind of harsh to her. You showed mercy to Mantereda. The king's word is law. Perhaps you should ask the Davos how much mercy I show to lawbreakers. He's gonna be like, show too much kindness. The fingerless they don't back. fear you. Yep. They don't fear you. They don't follow you. The free folk will never follow you, no matter what you do. You're the man who burned their king alive. Who then? Only one of their own. Do you know this wretched girl, Lyanna Mormont, the Lord Commander's niece, Lady of Bear Island, and a child of ten? 
Asked her to commit her house to my cause. That's her response. Bear Island knows no king but the king in the north, whose name is Stark. Oh, and amuses. She wrote that at ten. Apologize, Your Grace. Northerners can be a bit like the free folk, loyal to their own. My brother Robert went on often and loudly about how difficult it was to control them, even with your father's help. Hey, so he learned from his brothers. Tonight, mm -hmm. the Night's Watch elects a new Lord Commander. Sir Alistair Thorne is going to win. Most likely. Unpleasant man. <laughs> he thinks you're a traitor. Your bravery made him look weak. He'll punish you for it. I don't punish men for bravery. I reward them. I don't doubt it, Your Grace. But I'm a brother of the Night's Watch. I don't know what I have left to give you. You can give me the North. Even if I wanted to, I'm a bastard. A snow. Kneel before me. Lay your sword at my feet. Pledge me your service and you'll rise again as John Stark, Lord of Winterfell. What? But that's a problem because there's already a new Lord of Winterfell. Isn't it supposed to be Ramsay? Stark with the stroke of a pen. It's the first thing I ever remember wanting. A daydream that my father would ask the king. And just like that, I would never be the bastard of Winterfell again. He deserved this. You do. I, I couldn't be happier for you. I'm gonna refuse him. Why? Uh, yeah. He doesn't want to betray his honor. Yeah. Of Winterfell. I swore a vow to the Night's Watch. If I don't take my own words seriously, what sort of lord of Winterfell would I be? Then well, you never not, be. It. Yeah, <laughs> that, that don't make sense, John. Does anyone wish to speak for candidates before we cast our tokens for the 998th Lord Commander? That's a lot. Sir Alistair Thorne is not just a knight, he's a man of true nobility. He was acting commander when the wall came under attack and led us to victory against the wildlings. He did ball out, I'm not even gonna lie. And has been a defender of the watch and the wall almost all of his life. Sir Dennis Malister joined the watch as a boy. Through ten winters he served. As commander of the Shadow Tower, he kept the wildlings away. We could do no better. John's like, that's John's my vote. vote. Yeah, he likes him. There is no one else. We will begin the voting. Mr. Raymond. Oh. Samuel Tarly, go on. Sam the Slayer. <laughs> Another wildling lover, just like his friend Jon Snow. Don't besmirch him, bro. Slayer? Her name is Gilly. Brother Slint knows her quite well. They cowered together in the larder during the battle for the wall. Oh. Oh. Nice! <laughs> a wildling girl, a baby, and Lord Jan. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Lord Janus was hiding with the women and children, <laughs> Jon Snow was leading. Sir Alistair fought bravely, it is true. When he was wounded, it was John who saved us. Took charge of the wall's defense. He went north to deal with Mance Raider. Let's go with Sam. almost certainly meant his own death. He left out of his parts. That, he led the mission to avenge Lord Commander Mormon. He saw something in John, and now we've all seen it too. He may be young, but he's the commander we turn to when the night was darkest. Yeah! I agree. John, John, John. I uh, can't argue with any of that. But who does Jon Snow want to command? Night's Watch or the Wildling? Everyone knows he you know that's about to the come Wildling up. girl. What would have happened in that tent between those two old friends if Stannis' army hadn't come along? We all saw him put the king beyond the wall out of his misery. Do you want to choose a man who has fought the Wildlings all his life? Or a man who makes love to them? What's the rebuttal? I need to know. Those political ads keep coming, don't they? I know. It is time. Man, he should have been like... Hush your mouth. <laughs> oh, the gavel. Yeah. Yeah. Go vote for yourself. He's not going to win. I was about to say, if they had Meister Eamon doing it, that would be jacked up. <laughs> it's a tie. I think the one on the left has one more, does it not? Appears to be a tie, man. Oh, damn. You count fast, girl. It just looks even. <laughs> the left one looks taller to me. <laughs> that was his vote? I guess so. Oh, that old man got like three votes. Dang, he's gonna have to listen to him. <gasps> he's not going to, I bet. He's gonna be a stubborn one. I can't really picture this. This is like so bizarre. Yeah, he, he's about to be my he's steward. He's too young. He's gonna be my steward if I was John. Right, yeah, 100%. Arnie, are you weird? <laughs> <laughs> he's out there poking pigeons. What have you got there? I said. Turn around and go. Turn around and go. That's a nice little sword. Worth a hundred pigeons, a sword like that. Nothing's worth anything to dead men. The guy who opened the door. <laughs> Better run him down. She's gonna follow him and try to sneak in when he opens the door. How'd they get over there, Bo? Who are you? <laughs> Why were they scared of you? You lost this. Oh, he's like a mermaid. Yeah, good job, dude. Hey! Oh, what's that dude? How'd he do that? Oh, he's seen men that he could change their no face. Here. Remember? There isn't. A man is not Jack and Hagar. What the heck? Yes, you well, are. Who are you then? No one. And that is who a girl must become. She's like a philosopher. Okay, let her in. Give her room and board. You think the color of those doors mean anything? It's just called the black and white house. Oh, so she can go in. What? That's her house now? Fendashe je krej kishil. Shiro wanye papchale ge shejingel frojilath misa. 
Valdakis from Misa Thol. Oh, man. I thought he got a right to a trial. Why? Ashe, Misa. Oh, he took it upon himself. Yeah, don't act impulsively around her. You know, honestly, I spent this episode wondering who the heck that guy was. Oh, no. What is going to happen? The crowd might not agree with her. What does she do, babe? I mean, I get where she's coming from, but geez. Oh, my gosh. Dude, in a sense, like, there was no law against that. She needs to, like, set the rules. <gasps> oh, my. See, but when they're not happy, they'll turn on you, right? Here we go. Chaos ensues. Dang, they kind of turned on her easy, didn't they? I'll stand guard outside your door tonight, your grace. You all guard tonight. Leave me. Who's there? Too bad Jorah's not around. He'd know what to do in a time like today. What if that's who it is? He's gonna get his head cut off. Oh, it's our missing dragon, probably. Oh, how is it not way more loud than that? Dragon. What's up, buddy? Is he happy? Yeah, he's smiling. So, like, where you been, bro? He's like, you better free the other ones. Why y'all acting like that? Abandoned again. Oh, that's sad. So everything that she knows and loves and work for is like turning on her. And yeah. She's losing it all. Come on. Oh, wow. That was some good symbolism. All right, baby. So two episodes in. What do you think? I think this season is insane. Well, like, I don't know how else to put it. I, a lot of things that we're all going to come together are finally now coming together. So where do you want to start? Man, let's just start where we picked off, man. Let's talk about the most interesting theme of the episode. So... We've seen Daenerys struggle. We've seen her be very confident. We've seen her be very unsure of herself. And ultimately, she keeps running into all these conundrums, man. And I said it before on the channel, like, liberate slaves, get rid of the masters. It sounds very easy. It sounds very simple. But the more she tries to follow that very simple formula, the more unintended consequences keep popping up. Right. And she was given a choice in this episode, man. Give this man a fair trial or not. Ultimately, she did, in my opinion, what uh, the right thing. But one of the slave people took it upon themselves to go seek vengeance and to basically end this guy before it came back to get him essentially mm -hmm. and he just felt like the cycle was never going to end if he didn't put a stop to this right here yeah basically and so basically daenerys got really upset about it and decided to execute him publicly to show that She's not you're not going to break my rules basically right. the crowd did not like that they turned on her mm -hmm. they started hissing and it was just really crazy because just one act like that, and they were ready to literally smash her head in with a rock. Which so. is scary how quick they can turn on you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, other than that, with on Daenerys' side, um, her dragon, Drogon, came back and like he was kind of like, what's up? And then dipped. He was like, I'm, I really don't like you, but I just want you to know what's up. I'm here. He came in and said, how you doing? Are you emotionally ready to go? She seemed unsure of herself. She seemed scared. He didn't really like that. He didn't seem to mess with that, and he just rode off. Um, right. something crazy that happened in this episode, man, is... Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, Arya oh, yeah. goes to that house, right? Arya goes to that house, and she opens the door, and the guy's basically like, nah, that person doesn't live here. And we find out that, what, that guy is Jackin, or... It's not really Jackin. It's somebody. no one. Which yeah, is very nobody weird. or somebody. No one. Um, yeah, so that part was really weird. Arya sort of did her thing. She's over in Bravos, and he essentially found her the second time and scouted her out. So that was pretty weird, man. I don't really know what's going on with that. I don't really even know what that place is. But Arya went in there. We'll see more about that. Brienne, of course, came across Sansa. Mass with Sansa. Mm -hmm. It went about exactly how I imagined it would. Littlefinger publicly challenged her, challenged her narratives, basically. Made mm -hmm. her out to be someone Who can't protect dangerous, her, basically. Right? Yeah, and Sansa decided that she didn't want anything to do with the lady, which I don't blame Sansa. I mean, she's probably so paranoid and scared and doesn't know who to trust. Right. And I think Brienne needs to understand that she's coming across a little crazy just walking up to people like that. Like, like, th like a shadow killed him with a face of Stannis. Like, if you just, as a third person, you just look at that. That just doesn't sound very um, 
logical <laughs> yeah it was just really funny how like they pulled up in those four horses in the stable and they were talking about how crowded it was and talking about waiting times <laughs> and all this type of junk he's like oh it must be good it's it's full house <laughs> yeah that was really funny man cersei is just she's trying to like take charge of everything but the thing that came out of cersei and jamie right there though was jamie is going to go get Mar marcella marcella from dorn with the help of Bronn. right so i guess they're about to go on a mission but to me, it seems like scary because Dorn is kind of like sending threats to them, right? Yeah, and you also saw it's not going to be an easy task getting her, especially not doing it publicly because they're keeping a really sharp mm -hmm. eye on her. I mean, she's they're just like watching strolling her. through yeah. the gardens. Yeah, it was funny how Bronn, Bronn thought he was about to settle down, and it turns <laughs> out this lady was talking about how her sister bullies her around, and <laughs> basically she was just explaining that like. Hey, if you marry me, you're basically marrying a dunce. It's my sister who's like the queen bee of the family. Right. I and don't get a castle. Like, <laughs> right, right. And just like that, man, he's about to run off with Jamie, which I find to be just <laughs> hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, because yeah. Bronn's just like, he calls him Sir Bronn of the Blackwater, too, because yeah. <laughs> he don't even have a last name. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, helps his boy out. Tries to make him not look bad in front of his yeah. lady. That part was really funny, man. I'm excited for the adventures of Bronn and Jamie. Yeah, I, me too. That'd be a great little spinoff, right? Because they just like, their banter is just good because they kind of don't like each other, but they kind of do. I don't know. We finally met Oberyn's brother. Mm -hmm. Turns out he's in a wheelchair. Doran Very is his feeble. name. Yeah. And Oberyn's, I guess, girlfriend, wife, whatever the case may be, she's over there making political moves, man. She's she's over there saying that, like, you may have the power and the authority, but I have the will of the people. And Yeah, she has, like, some, vengeance. like, charge of some snakes or something. I guess right. it's, like, the, what, the resistance crew. Yeah, I mean, maybe so, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. But she also wants to do really unethical things to that little girl. And right, and Oberyn, Oberyn, doesn't, like, stand, nah, Oberyn nah, nah. doesn't stand for that, because remember, Oberyn told Cersei straight up, we in Doran, we don't do things to little girls. Y'all do that here. Right, but he also used her to make threats towards Cersei like on two different occasions. Did he? Do like I would I didn't see Oberyn do that. No, I did. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, guys, but <laughs> I feel like he mentioned it to Cersei in the midst of their conversations and it just came across as very threatening. It didn't come across maybe like, you know, I'll kill your daughter or anything, but it came across as like don't think that I forget. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't know. think it was that way at all, but well, I don't but know, I, man. Like, she's willing to just go crazy and do it. So maybe, maybe he was. You know, there were a couple. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I, don't know. Well, I feel I like she we'll has a lot know. of, like, hurt in her heart and yeah, a lot of vengeance. Yeah, so, 100%. It's easy to think that you can just be so perfect and not break your traditions until something like that happens. Right. But at the same time, I guess she's hurt. But at the same time, man, like, don't you sort of expect him to die that way? He's just running around volunteering himself. <laughs> Anyways, man, that was crazy. So they're definitely not on the same page over there. Basically, there's a civil. Like a internal strife definitely brewing over there. Something tells me that's going to come into play. And I don't know exactly what kind of stands Alaria has compared to him. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. Doran or whatever. Yeah. So we'll see with that. Right. And then Tyrion had a really interesting conversation with Varys. Varys was basically saying, Tyrion, you make a great king, but let's be real. You're not going to be king. Kind of like, tease me a little people bit. People like us never are. Is what he's right. Saying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that was really interesting. But he did say that he was a great leader and he made a really good... What what would you name that? Like a he someone in power. He makes he makes a really good person in power. I guess a good politician. or or like someone who helps someone in power. What is assistant advisor or something? Well, he like was because when the he king was handed minute, the king, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was handed the king, he was making all these good <laughs> good moves right. that were like apparently good for the realm. So Tyrion is just at a place of like <laughs> he's questioning everything. Man, he's at a place of despair. His family's abandoned him. I mean, we don't even got to talk about what happened with Shay and his dad. So he's just at a place where. He's just extremely lost, and he's drunk. So Varys said, let's go meet Daenerys. Can you imagine how crazy that would be to be Tyrion? It's not like you're just someone from Westeros, right, with loyalties. I mean, you were literally Tyrion Lannister. Right. And now you have to travel across the Daenerys Sea and go meet Daenerys. That, that, it's just wild to me, man. Like He's he's in such a character development arc right now that it, it's it's hard to see where it's even going. Right. But. I hope it goes in. I hope he kind of goes. Like, I hope Varys and Selmy knows him. And I hope they're like joining the squad, dude. And I really, basically, at this point, Tyrion has just emancipated his family. Like, 300%. right, he, he's done with the Lannisters. Like, Cersei Bump and Jamie is not in there. Nah, no, nah, he likes Jamie. Jamie helped him escape. Yeah, but Jamie's not gonna like him because he done killed the dad and caused all this chaos. I don't know if that's necessarily true, man. You know, Jamie seems 
Jimmy seemed disappointed at what the funeral. You could just see in his face that he was kind of like. This well, he was is my probably fault. stressed. I mean, right? he was He's probably like, like this well, is my damn, fault, bro. this is not what I was imagining, you know. Like, right, I thought I was going to let you go. You were going to go, but you had to do all these extra stops. He didn't know out. that Tyrion was going to find all those extra crucial activities going on. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. He didn't even know he had access to the crossbow. <laughs> uh, something tell. I mean. Jamie doesn't seem like the type to be emotionally hurt at Tyrion. Oh, how could you do it? Jamie right. gets it. You know right. what I'm saying? Jamie would do the same thing, but it's just like, bro, at my expense, like you like, could just he kept wasn't, it moving. I mean, Maybe also, just kill her and keep it moving. Also, like, how bold can you be? <laughs> yeah, on the toilet with a crossbow. I mean, geez. Talk about bold. Uh, John, John won an election today, guys. Uh, that he wasn't, he, he didn't even know he was like running for. Right. He and got nominated. And he's only running about, what, 50% in the polls because apparently <laughs> half the people don't like him. They think that he supports. <laughs> Freaking a whole other country over here. They think he's working for Russia or something. So he's about to be over some people who half and half like him. <laughs> right. Right. Um, very interesting, man. John's definitely someone who didn't want that position. <laughs> he was having talks of possibly going back north and being a yeah, lord, like, which is crazy. Literally, Stannis was just telling him, like, yo, I'll make you Lord of Winterfell today if you want. Which is kind of disappointing, though, because when that happened, I immediately got really excited. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, great. John can go back north. Justice is, for Ned and two bees, right? Well, it kind of seems like that, right? right? He can go back north, which is kind of like where he belongs. Mm -hmm. He can take the Stark name because there's not much left over it. He and can what finally, an honor. He can, take, he can take the honorable north back from the torturous Boltons, right? right? I mean, they're like the, the epitome of what you don't really want if you're the Starks. And I was just really excited to see that dynamic, but I guess it's just not really meant to be. So it's not meant to be because he just got elected, <laughs> right? So the show and sort he can't of told deny me him that, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the show did a really. It was funny. That was odd. The show told me like John would make a great leader. He's bound for something more. I got really hyped about it, and then two seconds later, he's he, bound for something. More. <laughs> he was bound for something more. It just was not what they just told me it was yeah. about to be. So that was pretty cool, man. We'll see how that plays out. Um. I hope he I hope he does a good job, but I could see like how Janos and Sir Alistair are gonna be painted knuckleheads. They're gonna be knuckleheads. You know how we were sort of clinging on the idea that the Starks would reunite and blah blah blah. Maybe we should give up on that. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, there's not much going on there. And John at this point, you know, even if John caught up with Arya and was like, Hey Arya, how you been? I mean, they she was just a she was just a baby last time they saw right. each other. I mean, she's a <laughs> like, full fledged, you know, serial killer now. So um they're everywhere the sarks like they're just all over like they're everywhere yeah, their personalities are so different <laughs> oh dude another thing is i was thinking if he went north and tried to take the north he would run into theon and that could tie up that whole shit i don't know guys maybe john and ramsey would get together have a couple cold ones and just have a good old torture and fest on on theon because something tells me john might not like him either because he took winterfell yeah, this show could go in a lot of different ways, guys. Yeah. Um, yo, I'm going to keep it 100% real with you guys. Sorry if I was a little, I guess, sleepier than normal in this one. Maybe a little slow, but, you know, nothing new here. But it's like 3 in the morning, so definitely a little tired in this one. So sorry <laughs> about that. Sometimes we just got to get it done. But this was too, too good. This like, was so this good, man. Season 5 is starting out really awesome. We yeah. still haven't gotten a taste of the king yet because the king's, like, doing it. He's too busy. It seems like... And as crazy as it seems, it seems like it's not really about. But the I'm king anticipating right now. it because I want to see how this young boy handles well, it's all this about stuff, the crown, right? I mean, it's always about yeah. The crown, I want to yeah. see. I want to see it in action, but it's like, it's like just the, the anticipation of that. Like it's like I'm waiting on Marjorie to do something, right, or do something like that. Or, like, or, I don't. I'm just ready for something where the king has to step up. And, like the sorry to interrupt you. The vibe the show's giving me is like. Marjorie's going to come in and she's going to wreck Tommen as far as Cersei's concerned, right? I mean, she has an agenda for Tommen. She has her own interest. And it's and, not Cersei's. They're going to have opposing opinions. Yeah, so. and I'm just waiting on that to happen. Like, I'm right. ready for that to come to a head. I mean, right. she hates that girl. She shouts out in vain just every time that girl's name comes out of her mouth. I mean, she can't help but to call she her, has like, to call a whore, her right? Always, yeah. like <laughs> so... Um, she, this is her middle name. I thought that was Marjorie's middle name. She much. hates her on like a prophetic level, though. She's a harlot, a whore, yeah. <laughs> a B word. <laughs> she's called her some things. I'm not even sure. I might be making them up, but I'm thinking of some terrible things she's done called that little girl. Right. Uh, you got anything else to say? What else Let's happened see. in this episode? Oh, yeah. And then Arya gets in there and the does dude all that confusing face. stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, man, the biggest, the biggest takeaway to me is John got elected and Daenerys. 
Daenerys is finding herself, you know, it's funny though, because Daenerys is having to ask a lot of questions that the men in the North don't seem to have to ask themselves. Like about slavery and stuff? To an extent, yeah, but it's like, you know, it, justice is just so simple, like in Westeros, but definitely with slavery, right? But there's but, just like, a lot of questions because you, you, she has no foundation at the moment. Yeah, and things so move different this, over there. Yeah, right. You know, like in and her Westeros, board's very diverse as well. Her may, council. Yeah, maybe it's just like the size of her army and the size of like her movement prepared to the great dynasty and the great machine that is King's Landing. But you know, like if Joffrey would have executed someone publicly, everyone in the stands wouldn't have started hissing at him and trying to hit right. Even when they like, did that, 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 start, that, they were like. Whatever you say, King Queen. Well, uh, yeah, when they did that to the Starks, <laughs> there was no immediate outcry, but that ended up costing them 100. percent Well, yeah, but no one was going to sit there and defy. You know, they weren't going to hiss at Joffrey. They would all get their tongues cut out. Well, I definitely, can, I, I think of King's Landing as like the Roman Empire. You know, no one's going to stand up to the Roman Empire back then and expect to win. But the thing with Khaleesi is they were quick to. That's that's the scary part about all this. A big takeaway I had was it really turns out that. The most loyal people Khaleesi really has is her self swords, her unsullied. Mm. Because the, the Dorthraki rally for strength. Um, Whoever's the strongest at the time. Yeah. You know, the slave people, I mean, like, their ultimate motivation is to just not be put back in bondage. So, I mean, like, the only people who are really royal to her cause are the unsullied, which makes Grey Worm sort of seem like her main guy. You know, it, it really sucks that, uh, What's his name? He's not here, Jorah. Mm -hmm. I feel like she could use his. I wish you would give us a right little now. bit about where he is. <laughs> he's just, hey, he's just, <laughs> who knows, man? He's just traveling the countryside. <laughs> uh, guys, like, comment, subscribe, hit us up on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us for real. We're on season five. That's nuts. This show's going by so fast. I know it's going to be over in like the blink of an eye, and it's going to be history. We're just trying to enjoy it, man, because this show is just, honestly, it's so complicated. There's so many moving parts going on, there's so much to think about. But it's just so good that I don't even mention the main things that make TV and movies great, which is just the music, <laughs> yeah. the sound effects, the luts, the color grades. I love the, the music. Every time you are mentioning a character, the music that plays in the background is kind right. of like Lord of the Rings esque. Every like everything from like like the aperture of the shots. I mean, there's just so there's so many things to how really their admire. moods change their, by their clothing. Right, uh, the hair styles and yeah this. i mean it's, it's it's top of the line guys this is you know this is as good as tv gets so thank you guys so much for the support we're gonna keep on chugging through it see you guys on the next one